Holmes contains foul-mouthed, leery comedians who should know better, but they don't. You have been warned. See, the thing is, like, nobody really gives a feck, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's really great to be in Dublin, you know, but there are people here who don't even know their own city, right? I said to this bloke earlier, I told him where we were doing our comeback gig, and he said, what's the point? <laughs> I mean, he'd never even heard of the place, you know? And then he told me that I was like ripping off Sinead O'Connor. He said, you know, you do the same tricks with your voice. And I said, look, Sinead O'Connor is a strong woman, you know? She does her thing and I do mine. Like, and if you can't understand that, that's your problem, you know? Now, are you gonna ordain me or not? <laughs> <laughs> then he tried to compare the band to Michelle de Brun because he said her latest records weren't worth shit. <laughs> but you know, it's all down to jealousy, like, you know, I think people are jealous of the cranberries because we got up off our ability and showed our arses to the world. <laughs> okay, and now, you know, I want you to give it up for the outstanding ability and the great arse of the next act, right? <laughs> Please give a rock and roll welcome to a brilliant guy, Mr. John Henderson! <laughs> Thanks much. How are you? It's, uh, how are you? How are you? How's it going? It's lovely to be here. Thanks very much. Absolutely fantastic. It's great to be here. My name is John Henderson. Uh, one thing I'd like to I am from Dublin, and uh, one thing I'd like to talk about, there's an awful lot of beggars on the streets of Dublin nowadays, you might have noticed, uh, which is an awful shame. And an awful lot of homeless people begging, which is a real shame. But I do think that homeless people who beg have got their marketing all wrong. Have you ever see them? They sit there with a big sign saying, homeless, you know, please help. Whenever I see that, I think, well, it's one less expense to have to worry about, you know. <laughs> I mean, I have to pay a mortgage, you know. If you were sitting there with a big sign saying, five bedroom house in Black Rock, I'd say, well, there's a man with problems. There you go, pal. <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of gigs around the country, which is nice, and, you know, various cities. When we, go, when we go away far away, we kind of we get put up in hotels, which is not, it's a really nice thing, you know, because I don't get to stay in hotels very often. I like the whole buzz about staying in a hotel and all the little things they do for you, you know, and the fact that you have to drink for 24 hours a day because the bar is open and I'd be ashamed to wait for <laughs> Couldn't waste it, you know. And it's, it's the little things they do for you in hotels. It's fantastic. You know, you have somebody who comes in in the morning and tucks your toilet roll in for you. That's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> tucks your toilet roll away nicely, because, you know, sometimes you don't have time to do that at home, sure you don't. <laughs> Oh, then you have toilet roll flying here, toilet roll flying there. Talk it away nicely, fantastic. 
And I always love the way you can usually find a remote control for the TV in a hotel, be in a hotel bedroom, because it's usually attached to the wall by a poxy little piece of telephone flex for some reason. <laughs> It's always a little bit too short. It's always a bit, just about six inches long. Oh, fuck. And, you, and you forget about it, and you go to change the channel, and it flies out of your hand, <laughs> knocks over a lamp, or hits a prostitute in the face, or something like that. <laughs> and they charge you extra for that, so be careful. Uh. <laughs> but I, I was in a hotel recently, and I was in the hotel. I was trying to have a shower. I say I was trying to have a shower because sometimes in hotels now it can be very difficult. Because I was in the shower, right? And I had me free bar of soap as well. I said, free bar of soap, gonna get good use out of this. Where would you get it? Fantastic. So I was washing myself all over, put my arms down between my legs. Big wash, fantastic. Went to wash the soap off. Of course, in the hotel, the shower head is actually built into the wall. It's not like my old crappy shower at home where I can clip it out a little thing and do all this business like this. <laughs> So I'm left there with this big soapy arse and I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> of course, I had a shower head pointed out across the room and I was backing across the room. <laughs> <sighs> didn't work. So what I eventually did was, and a piece of advice for you here now, if you're ever stuck in this situation, what I eventually did was, I turned the shower on as normal, opened the slidey door, you think, right? Stood back at the far wall of the bathroom and I ran at the shower. <laughs> And when I got to it, I just did a big handstand up against the wall. <laughs> Water came down, washed the soap away, lovely. And it has to be said, a not too unpleasant experience either if you want to try it out yourself. <laughs> oh, it's nice and tingly, it gets into all those little parts now, I have to say. It's fantastic. Great for a night in on your own. <laughs> Beefy company. In the meantime, that's all for me. Thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs> You're on in a minute. Should you not be changed by now? What? What? Ah, shite. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Thank you. You know, it, it's only only in this country of Ireland you get a warm welcome like that, you know. Uh, apart from Glasgow, if you're pissed, which I am. <laughs> but I'm Scottish and I, I live in London. And they've got the underground there and they've got the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard anyone say to anybody else in, their, in my life. Mind the gap. <laughs> they tell people this. Mind the gap. I love watching fucking foreigners going, gap, gap. <laughs> what fucking gap? <laughs> oh, that gap. <laughs> well, thank God you were there. <laughs> I'm sorry I don't know about you, but when I see train gap platform, I go for the fucking platform. <laughs> I don't have to be told this. I've never seen anyone getting off a train going, I was talking to Joe. <laughs> you know, and they're friends. You know. <laughs> and, their fr <laughs> and their friend going, that was you not minding the gap there, John. <laughs> You're right, I didn't listen to the fella. I, uh, <laughs> crawled to the exit on your own, I fucking will. The world's full of mad things, mad people. People that want to be in charge of us all. You know, and in America now, they've got, they're going to be having the, uh, the, the presidential changeover, you know? And, uh, and I was reading in the paper recently about the celebrities that want to be president. Schwarzenegger does, you know? Warren Beatty wants to do it. Arne, the lot, they all, they all want to have a go. And there was one name missing off that list that should be there, Robert De Niro. <laughs> he wouldn't fuck about, would he? <laughs> you think? I tell you what, imagine it. Saddam Hussein flies over the no-fly zone line, which he was told not to do, he did it. 
If he did that when De Niro was in charge, De Niro wouldn't sit there and go, right, we're going to send troops, tanks, bombs, guns. Fuck it, he'd go himself. <laughs> Joe Pesci, one side of him. <laughs> Al Pacino, the other. Gene Hackman as some kind of advisor of some kind. <laughs> would turn up at Saddam Hussein's house in his house and do this, solve the world's problem like this. You're talking to me. <laughs> ah, you're talking to me. Sit down. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. <laughs> Look at the fucking map. Look at the fucking map. <laughs> what the fuck is it on? <laughs> what is the line on the map, you shit? The fucking line. No fucking fly zone, no fucking fly... What did I tell you? What did I tell you? <laughs> did you fly over my fucking line? <laughs> then Al Pacino walks in. <laughs> Ooh-ha. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> that is what you are. <laughs> oh, God, up your ass. <laughs> You're fucking fairy. Whoa. <laughs> Gene Hackman would walk in at that point. Away. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> you're going down. <laughs> but the man who would save the day, Joe Pesci. Funny, funny, how? What the fuck is funny here? <laughs> Up your ass, you mumbling fuck. It's for you. Fuck you. Yeah, fucking degenerate prick here. The fuck? Give me a gun. Give me a gun over here. Shoot this. Shoot this mumbling fuck in the ass. That's for you, you prick. That's for your dog. Fuck you. It's a joy to come to Ireland. You're wonderful people. Thank you. Very much. You know, people said that our last tour was sponsored by Weight Watchers because we used to be huge. But now, of course, they say that I'm anorexic, you know, but I'm not, like, I'm bulimic, and there is a difference. And yes, I was asked to be in Angela's Ashes, but I couldn't put on the weight. Now, that's all the jokes that I have for you for the moment, right? <laughs> but the next guy is really funny. His review in the Irish Times said, very funny, indeed. <laughs> so please give it up for the comic stylings of Brendan Burr. No, you're probably thinking, <clears throat> you better be fucking funny after that, pal. <laughs> Big cheer from the Irish. <laughs> cheer from the Scots. <laughs> Y'all come in the same car. <laughs> okay. Big cheer from the English. Ha 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 let's play Braveheart and kick the fucking shit out of him. <laughs> Who wants to be William Wallace? But uh, okay, north side, yeah. south side. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> you see, there's all these stereotypical accents, you know, in Dublin, like north side accent. Like, you know, what's the fuck a story? 
compared to Southside, like totally amazing, what? <laughs> but seriously, I want to know who are these people who go on the Chris Barry show? <laughs> Where is their accent from? E. E. And the reason I rob cars <laughs> is because there's no facilities. <laughs> it's all right, Chris, you're sitting there in your cushion number. You know, you've got facilities. We've got no facilities. <laughs> and uh, dude, Aircom, did you ever try, you know, this new Aircom answering service? Have you ever tried to synchronize your voice with their Aircom ser answering service? Great crack, isn't it? Hello. Welcome to the Aircom answering service. Brother Mark! Can I come to the phone right now? <laughs> but um, I was actually, you know, this whole Irish thing as well, you know, we, we are, um, we're told we're very Christian, and very giving, and very kind. And we are. And I found out as well, when I was actually reading this article over in Edinburgh during the festival when I was doing my gigs, yeah? <laughs> and this is true, this actually happened. I'm sure you've actually read the story. In The Scotsman, this Alaskan guy went to Australia to find God. He went to a desert and he got lost. And he was found 43 days later. And he survived on mud and grass. And there's a photograph of him in the front of the paper being lifted up into this helicopter. He's like that. <laughs> and I was looking at this dreadful, dreadful story and I was thinking because it's international the Americans are probably saying oh my god poor guy oh gee m water no water no food and just mosquitoes and oh my gee oh geez I, 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 I want this this guy should be an Oprah <laughs> I want to touch him this is very spiritual and the French are probably saying it's an awful thing that uh, how can a man go 43 days without a woman Germans, Germans probably say, 43 days? How can you survive 43 days when you're only one person? Because we're always four persons, Hans, Franz, Fritz and Klitz. <laughs> How can you survive 43 days without any muesli? <laughs> but the Irish reaction, which was my reaction, and I think it encompasses the whole Irish nation of our friendliness and Christian giving and caring. I looked at this photograph and I looked at him and I went, you fucking idiot, you. <laughs> Give me your mask. I thought that the last guy was really funny, like I was laughing my head off there, you know? Actually, I'm still laughing my head off, you just can't really tell. <laughs> you know, people say that I can't write lyrics and I think it's really unfair, right? So I'm going to give you an example of some of the greatest lyrics I've ever written. You can really see what I mean there, like they speak for themselves, you know? <laughs> okay, you ready for the final act? <laughs> He's really one of the best in the business, so please go wild and crazy for the very brilliant Jeff Green! <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks. It's really nice to be here. You had a drink? Everyone had a drink? One or two. You lose things when you get pissed, though, don't you? Like your keys and your virginity and stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
you remember those mittens you used to have as a kid with a bit of elastic around the back of your coat? So you didn't lose your mittens, you'd have one there and one there. You go to school like that. I need them for me now, with me keys at one end and me wallet at the other. I'll say I'm off to get pissed. Yes, I foresee no problems. And you're not like that. Oh, 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 oh. How much is that, cabby? <laughs> hey, mate, you've lost a shoe. Fucking haven't. <laughs> They're on elastic. <laughs> Everything I own is elasticated to me. Because I'm stupid. <laughs> and I can't be trusted with valuables. <laughs> Only thing you don't lose when you're drunk, though, is your change. Notice that? It's all you have at the end of the night. <laughs> Change. There's not a note on you. You've turned it all into change during the, during the course of the evening. Sort of walking home. Like, <laughs> you go to bed under your top button. <laughs> Dive into bed. You wake up the next day. Your trousers are in that perfect figure of eight. <laughs> Looks like you've been vaporised. <laughs> your girlfriend's going bloody hell. He's been zapped. Oh, he was only a foot from safety as well. <laughs> Still, he put up a fight. Look at his underpants. <laughs> he must have been terrified. <laughs> My girlfriend can always tell when I've come home, like red of eye and foul of breath and <laughs> licentious of thought and floppy of deed. <laughs> That's a bugger, isn't it? That's one of God's jokes, that is, isn't it? Get you what for it and then, no. <laughs> it's like playing snooker with a rope. <laughs> isn't it? You know, you know that sort of... You know, you know that sort of. <laughs> Ooh, you bloody... I think I'm gonna have to try and fold it in. Oh, don't pretend I'm the only person in this room who's tried to fold it in. Isn't you? <laughs> On the quiet. Yeah. No, no problems down here, love. Had a bit of origami insertion. <laughs> women are so lucky. You don't have that problem, women, do you? You never get a woman saying, I'm sorry, love, I, I, I can't get my legs open. <laughs> I've had one too many. <laughs> locked, nothing locked. Soz. Many of you really sympathetic. I'll just get the jack out the car then. <laughs> you don't get away with it that easy. Because <laughs> I'm in the mood for love. <laughs> Sex is the hard bit, isn't it? That's the... Where do women give that? Why do, where do women give that more, more? You know, in the throes of passion? Where do they say that? More, more. You feel like going, there is no fucking more. <laughs> if there was any more, I would gladly give it to you. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sucking the cheeks of me arson as we speak. <laughs> you couldn't fit a credit card between the cheeks of my arse at the moment. <laughs> more, more. There's no more. Anyway, could you shout less, less? I think the neighbours are listening. I have to face these people. So when you live with someone, God, blimey, the affection just does your head in, doesn't it? And they move in, it's all, give us a kiss, give us a kiss. You, didn't I give you one yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a sandwich, the fee, six kisses. Mm. <laughs> you open the fridge door, give us a kiss. <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> Staying cool for you. <laughs> You're a nutter. <laughs> and holding hands, you've got to bloody hold hands all the time. Mm, mm, mm. Put your hand in your pocket, there's one already there. <laughs> I, uh, I thought you might like to hold that. <laughs> let me sit on your knee, let me sit on your knee. Fuck off, I am driving. <laughs> I am driving. Go on, just for a minute, let me sit on your knee. Just for a minute. No. Anyway, you only want to get near the airbag, I know your game. Because I've got an airbag on my car, you see. 
I've got one on my side. The girlfriend will have to take her chances, I'm afraid. <laughs> I bought the car. <laughs> hey, no leaning over if we have a crash. <laughs> no going, ah. Oh. <laughs> I bang my head on the back of yours. I'm knocked unconscious and you're going, hmm, comfy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to me. It's been a real pleasure tonight. Thanks for everybody for having me. for this evening. You've been watching John Henderson, Jeff Boys, Brenda Burke and Jeff Green. I'm Jojo Kangalani.